Hi yogis and welcome to my channel. My name is Tova and today's class is focusing on stretching after spinning or if you're outdoor cycling. So what you might not know about me is I am also a spin instructor. So I typically teach several spin classes a week and then I often will pop into a spin class or two that I'm not teaching just because I really love it. So I do know how important it is to make sure that you're really well stretched and that you maintain lots of mobility. If you're doing a lot of spinning, it's seated. So definitely we're getting some tightness through the hips. We're using our quadriceps and our hamstring muscles and our glutes a lot during the spin class. And then there's also that aspect of having your arms forward, which we're in reaching for the handlebars, but also we're in that position often using a computer. So we wanna make sure that we open up tight chest and shoulders as well once we get off our bike. So let's finish our ride and get onto our mats. today's spin focused stretching class it would be ideal if you had a yoga strap or a strap a belt a towel a sweater of any kind something just to give you a little bit of extra reach a yoga block or two and then if you also had a bolster or a cushion or even a tight rolled up towel will work really well of course we can definitely get by with no props at all but if you have them bring them onto your mat for today's practice we're gonna to begin today's practice in lying bound angle. So we're gonna start with an easy hip opener as well as a nice gentle chest and shoulder opener. So for this posture, if you do have a bolster or cushion or towel you can lie on, it's really nice because it will help open the chest and shoulders a little bit more. But if you don't have one, you can definitely lie back just straight on the floor. Or if your chest and shoulders tend to be really tight, going over a cushion or a bolster might just be a little bit too intense for you. So please feel free to also decide to go from the floor for that reason. So as we sit near the edge of our bolster, let our knees open wide and lie back over the bolster here. Now, depending on how big your bolster is, you do want to make sure that your head's supported. So on this bolster, my head stays on the bolster, but if I'm using a shorter bolster, I'll just tuck a second bolster or a yoga block or cushion underneath my head. And as we settle in, today's practice is more of a yin-based yoga practice. So allowing your tight muscles, your tight fascia, just all of the connective tissues to really start to loosen up and relax here. And in order for that to happen, we need to spend a little bit more time in the posture. So not feeling like we're rushing, just being very gentle with our bodies. Of course, you could always take a block and stack it underneath both knees to give your thighs a little bit more support here. If you feel like you're holding your legs up or if you feel tension through your groin. Likewise, feel free to close your knees at any point if this becomes too intense. Each stretch should only feel like about a 7 out of 10. So you are feeling a little something. You're feeling a little stretch. But you're not feeling overwhelmed by the stretch. You shouldn't be feeling like you're gripping or tightening in any areas. What you want to feel is your body starts to ease into this and you find a little more release, a, a feeling of letting go.
taking just a few more deep breaths here. Of course, you could always decide to stay in a posture a little bit longer. Hit the pause button, hang out until you're ready to move on. There's no rush. Gently bring your knees to close using your hands to help if you'd like. Bring your arms back more towards the middle, just slowly sitting up here. And you can just slide that cushion or the bolsters off to the side. As we begin to move forward here, coming onto the knees, and we're gonna make our way into pigeon stretch here. So I'm kind of just gonna slide into it, but of course you could choose to go from downward facing dog. This is just a different option. So if you take a seat onto your right thumb cheek and then bring your right leg forward so that it's starting maybe straight to the mat or, or tucking more in towards your groin. And if you notice how my back leg is just kind of halfway bent behind me, this can always be an option that you stay in. So maybe you just stay here and this is called 90-90 hip stretch. Or we can shift forward as we slide our way into pigeon. So choosing the option that works for you. And we are going to be staying here for a little bit. So please do feel free to adjust and move around as needed. We do want to try to be fairly still and quiet in, in practice. But if you're moving to make the posture more accommodating or better, that's the kind of movement that you're looking for. It's the fidgeting and restlessness that we want to try to avoid. And you might decide to stay more in the top variation of pigeon like I am here. This will give you a little deeper stretch through the front of the left hip. So if you knew that that was an area in your body that's more tight, you might decide to spend more time here in your pigeon. If you come down to your elbows, this is going to give you a deeper stretch through the right buttock or the glute muscles. So again, if that's an area that you know is more tight for you after your spin or your cycle, then you might decide to spend more time here. Maybe you split the difference and you spend a little bit of time in each posture. I'll leave it up to you. Do try to relax your head and your neck in whatever position you're in, whether that's having your head hanging, Maybe it's resting it on a block or bringing it to the floor, but not holding tension through your neck. It should be nice and loose. And it's very important for athletes, for people who do a lot of intense exercise like spinning, to make sure that they're stretching, doing yoga, doing mobility often because a long muscle is a strong muscle. So you wanna make sure that you can really get some power in your pedals and having the mobility in your body and in your muscles and your joints really gives you the ability to do that. It also is important for injury prevention. So if we spend all of our time doing hard training and we don't spend any of the time doing the maintenance work like stretching and yoga, that's often how we end up with injuries. So it's not something to be skipped over, to spend the last couple minutes doing. Of course, in a class, yes, you typically only spend a couple of minutes stretching, but it's always a recommendation that you spend some additional time on your own. So I really love to do yoga after spin. That's like my, my favorite holy grail when I'm teaching, if I can teach a spin class followed by a yoga class. It's a fantastic day. So we're not quite coming out of pigeon yet. We're going to move into a different variation. So I'm going to show you the variation of pigeon, and then I'm going to show you an option in case that's not accessible to you or doesn't feel good for you. And of course, you can always decide just to stay right in regular pigeon without doing any kind of variation at all. So if you would like here, we're gonna aim to grab our foot. And this could also be using your strap or your towel to grab your foot as we open up through the quadricep and the hip a little bit more in this position. If this is not a place that your body's gonna go, you may want to come out of pigeon, lie on your tummy, and then you're gonna bend your left leg, 
reaching for your foot with your hand or again using your strap and coming into this variation of a line quad stretch and just bring your forehead down. So choosing an option that works for you, coming into the position that I'm holding, using the pigeon with the foot grab, or just staying right in regular pigeon or 90-90. Good, and release. And just take your time here, take a breath. And then slowly making your way into pigeon on the opposite side. So again, I started in like a 90-90 position. And of course, if you're coming into regular pigeon, for most people, the foot is gonna come down and slant towards your groin. For some people, it will be more straight or totally parallel. But definitely don't force your body to go there. I would tell you from the thousands of hours that I've spent teaching, there's very few people that are actually doing pigeon with their leg in this position. Um, that would be people generally that have a lot of extra flexibility or just their joints in this specific posture are able to move that way. But it's generally not most people and it's quite most certainly not a lot of the very athletic population is going to be able to get their leg to go that way. So just be true to your body. There's no perfect place to be in here. It's just perfect in the position that you can get your body in that's giving you a stretch. Again, deciding whether you want to spend more of your time at the top or the bottom of pigeon or whether you want to do a timeshare. If you are time sharing, now might be a good time to come down towards the bottom portion of pigeon, but it does not need to be an even split. Remember, it's always okay to adjust your position, to dial the pose back a little bit. So coming up higher often is a little bit gentler for most people. You can shift on over to your left cheek and come into 90-90. And if you're in 90-90 and it's feeling a little too intense, bring your legs to close a little bit more. Good, and here's that place that we decide to add a variation, if you like here. So remember, we can come up tall, we can grab our foot, we can use a strap or a towel to help us here. You can lie on your tummy and you're gonna take a hold of your right foot with your hand or your towel. Or you could decide to just stay in regular pigeon or 90-90 and not add on a little bit of extra quad and hip here. And know that the lying on your tummy variation is a really excellent stretch. So this pigeon variation is not necessarily better. It's just a different stretch, but not everybody's gonna be able to get into this pigeon variation where most everybody can do the variation from before. Um, but even if you can do both, you may want to circle back and give that one a try after today's practice, just to see what it feels like. It might be a really great go-to stretch for you I tend to use it lots with athletes. Good, and release. And again, just gently coming out of that position. Take your time making any movements or adjustments that feel right for you. And then this is the part of class that we're gonna be using our yoga strap or belt or towel here. So just gathering that up, take a lie back on your mat. And if you do prefer to have a cushion or something underneath your head, 
please feel free to put that there now. And we're gonna start by strapping our right foot with our left leg bent. And just gently drawing the foot back towards your face. And it's okay to micro bend through the knee. What you wanna avoid is taking a giant bend in the knee in order to bring your foot further back. And not that that's bad or wrong, it's just that when you do that, you're bringing the stretch more into your glutes and you're losing a lot of the stretch through the hamstring. So right now we are targeting those hammies. So let's be honest with ourselves and just get to the place that we can, just feeling a gentle stretch here. And you might decide to use the strap, kind of keep it long, bring your elbows down on the ground. You might prefer to reach your arms further up the strap. But do keep your head and your neck, or your head and your shoulders rather, down on your mat. And we just come to that place that we're approaching our edge. We maybe just take a small step back from there hold. And if after a few breaths it starts to feel easy, like we've taken a few steps back from the edge, then we draw a little deeper into the posture. If it feels like we're about to fall over the edge, then we want to back off the stretch a little bit more. As we take our last few breaths here, start to straighten your left leg. And that might mean that you need to release the stretch a little bit here. That's quite normal. Just coming back to your new edge with both legs straight here. Draw your toes back towards your shins with both legs. Breathe. Good, and bend your knees to release from the stretch. And then switching the strap over to the left side when you're ready. Starting with your right knee bent and your left leg straight. And hamstrings is often a place that's very tight for people. So if this isn't a yoga stretch that you do often, try to add it into your routine more regularly. You could easily toss this in to any practice before you move to Savasana or do it right after a workout. Good, and as we take our last couple of breaths here, again, stretch out through the right side. Readjust your position if need be. Good, and bend both knees, releasing from the stretch. Just slowly making your way back to seated. So coming into 
um, almost our final posture of the class. I just want to get you to grab a couple of props before we get there. So if you have a, um, a block, you may want to use that. You may want to use a bolster, uh, but you're going to need two, two cushions or two blocks at some point for our final posture. So just make sure they're close by so you don't have to get back up to grab them. And then we're going to lie back onto our mat. And we are just going to spend a couple of breaths here in happy baby stretch. So bringing your feet towards the roof, knees are wide, and you're pulling down, adding a little pressure on your feet. If your feet aren't accessible, take your ankles or your thighs here. And if it feels good for you to rock side to side, feel free to do that. Just keep your head down on your mat though. As we just do a little more release through our glutes, we did target those in the pigeon stretch but they are definitely a strong working muscle and they can always use a little extra. Good, and release from there. So now we're moving into supported fish. So if you know this posture, feel free to get into it. If you're unsure, you can take a look this way. So there's a couple of different ways that we can set this up. So for today, I'm going to use a block and a bolster for my head. You could just as easily use a softer cushion or a bolster instead of a block here. Especially for some people, they might prefer the cushion that's going to go across their back to be softer. Um, I definitely tend to like both. I sometimes like the softer cushion. I do also appreciate the harder block underneath my upper back as well. Uh, most people probably will be on the block this way, but uh, you can definitely decide which level is going to be right for you. So I'm going to back up and I'm going to find a spot where I can lie over that block where it's about the middle of my back or kind of right in my thoracic spine area. And then I'm going to find that cushion underneath my head to give me a little bit of support. It's stuck on my sticky mat. There we go. So you're just coming into this can be a gentle back bend or it can be a fairly deep back bend depending on your mobility. But this is a great way to open the chest and shoulders and we can keep our knees bent here. We can stretch our legs out. You could bring your legs into tented knees. So just take a moment to get into this position. And not only is this really excellent after spending some time on your bike with your hands reaching forward for your handlebars or particularly for those people who are outdoor road cyclists where you're really spending a lot of time in that hunched forward aerodynamic position this is fantastic to help open up through your back or anybody that spends a lot of time at a desk and if you spend a lot of time at a desk and on a bike then definitely this should be a regular in your repertoire to make sure that you maintain the proper mobility in your thoracic spine or your real back. And when we don't have good mobility there, that's where we start to see those hunchbacks um, forming over time. Now, if this position is just feeling uncomfortable for you, if it's not working, you can always dial it back and finish the practice the way we started in lying bound angle pose. And we're gonna rest here for just a few more moments.
please do feel free to stay here as long as you like. If you are ready to come out of the position, just take your time, start to lift your head, slowly making your way back to a comfy seated position. And whether you're a cyclist or just somebody who enjoys yoga, I do hope that you enjoyed today's class. If you are a cyclist or a spin enthusiast, definitely I would recommend using this class often to help really target the areas that you know are gonna be used and get tight from all of that time in the saddle. And if you enjoyed today's class, please do give me a thumbs up. Drop me a note in the comments. Let me know how you're doing or if you have any questions or if there's any areas that you need a little extra help stretching, I'd be happy to lend a hand. And if you enjoyed today's class, you could also consider saying thank you by buying me a cup of coffee. There is a link in the description below if you'd like to buy me a cup of joe. We'll finish today's class with your hands at your heart. The light within me honors the light within you. Thanks for joining my practice. Namaste.